Politics HQ News Central Television. Today on the program, we will assess the process of the just concluded general elections in Nigeria, the strengths, weaknesses, and the general conduct of the electoral umpire, INEC. I am Benga Aborowa. Uh, joining me on today's discussion, I uh, will be joined by Suleiman Aribagu, the co convener, the Election Integrity Monitoring Group, and Yemi Adda Molakun, Director, Enough is Enough, and Chukuma Okenwa, Executive Director, Lead Network Africa. But before I get to my guests, we'll head to join our correspondent, Ni Omani, who is live at the just concluded press conference of the candidate of the opposition People's Democratic Party. Good evening, uh, Ni. Can you give us an update of what just happened uh, in the press conference of Alaji Atiku Abubakar? Good evening, Benga, and how are you today? It's good to have you have me on, on the show. I'll just quickly give you a rundown and a summary of what has been said here. Uh, by the People's Democratic Party's presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar. Unlike the Labour Party presidential candidate, Peter Obi, Atiku Abubakar categorically said he will be going to court. He said he will uh, wait for legal counsel from his um, um, legal uh, advisors, then he would know what to do. But one thing he has hinted on is that justice must prevail, which, which hints at the fact that he will be going to court. On being open to um, talks, um, allegiance, or uh, uh, some sort of a bonding from the Labour Party by, with the uh, People's Democratic Party, he actually meant that he is open to it. And even uh, as according to him, if he had won, he was a, a person. He is a person who is open to creating a government of national unity that is bringing all party uh, members, whether you lost or not, together to ensure that everyone is represented. Although we can agree to the fact that most of his polls, uh, uh, eligible voters, were split across across board by Peter Obi, because Peter Obi, um, uh, the, the presidential candidate of the APC, won by uh, at around 34%, while he got 28%. Uh, Peter Obi got lesser. And this 28 percent is actually a large chunk if we look at it. Okay. Although we still have about 64 percent of 60 something percent of eligible of people who either didn't vote or were not able to vote. But the fact remains that, according to him right now, he might be seeking redress at the court. And they asked him if he gets to court and he does not get uh, what he seeks, that is what he calls justice. He jokingly said, he will then take it to God. Okay, okay, thank you very much, uh, Lee Omani, for your updates. We will definitely uh, talk to you during the course of our subsequent uh, bulletins. Thanks uh, for your time. Now, I'd like to bring in uh, Yemi Adem from Enough is Enough Group. Uh, Yemi, we've seen two press conferences today by the leading uh, candidates that, that lost the elections, uh, Peter Obi of the Labour Party. Um, we just concluded Alaji Atiku Abubakar's press conference. And uh, one thing they both said is they will be seeking uh, legal redress. What's your overall assessment of the just concluded general elections and what is enough is enough's uh, verdict on the conduct of the elections? Thank you. Good evening. Um, yeah, both of the candidates have uh, the rights to go to court. But um, I listened to the bits and pieces of both of them, actually. But I'm wondering, for me, more importantly, INEC, with the new Electoral Act, has seven days from the declaration of a result to review the results. And I'm wondering why INEC till today, I mean, it was declared yesterday, so we've already lost 24 hours, going on to 48, or going on to two days. Why INEC hasn't provided their guidelines of how they plan to go about this? I mean, there are aspects of this that are fraudulent, so that might be criminal, and they might choose to go to court. But for a lot of the ones that we've seen, that's just basically altering results mm -hmm. at key level. That, I imagine, would be within IMEX uh, jurisdiction or, so yeah, jurisdiction to correct. So I guess that would be my major thing. But overall, I think the elections fell far short of what Nigerians expected, and that IMEX own promise to use technology, to rely on technology, to leverage technology was not was not done. And until today, INEC still has not 
in a sense, quote unquote, explain to the Nigerian people what happened. Thank you, Yemi. I'd like to bring you Chukuma from Enugu. Now, Chukuma, Nigeria's election was billed to be one of the freest and most open contests to date, uh, with the introduction of the technology uh, Beaver Sanayarev. Can you provide a detailed analysis of the allegations of vote manipulation in Regan made by the opposition parties in Nigeria? You were an observer of the proceedings. Okay, like uh, endlessly. What makes this thing very, very interesting is that before this particular election, I can recall in November 2022, when uh, like, there were several allegations of the possibility of abandoning the beavers at some point, and we saw the INEC uh, come up to, uh, you know, to fault that particular claim. And ahead of elections also, we saw like some Nigerians who have actually learned how the country works and that possibly some forces may not want, you know, a free and fair election. And they expressed those concerns. And I never kept reassuring people. Now, one would wonder, like uh, the spokesman of Labour Party, Kenneth Okongo, alluded, you know, when he mentioned and said, well, the same beavers was used to transmit the House of Representatives elections and also for senatorial elections, which were done on the same day. So why didn't that happen? Uh, for the case of a uh, presidential election. And so when you look at it like in detail, you will actually find out that, that, you know, INEC is complicit to a very great extent because we saw that during that particular election, some people brazenly, you know, a particular political party allegedly brazenly, you know, engaged people in violence, trying to suppress voters in, in some parts of the country. We saw that happen in Rivers. We saw that happen in, in Lagos. And even before that, there was like a video flying over the internet of like a leading uh, candidate who was actually encouraging his stalwarts and followers to engage in violence, snatch ballot box, and all of those things. So that could mean that for him to have seen that that would be an advantage, despite all of the touted restrictions and the flow of funds to, to curb the issue of the vote buying, and then to that of like more security, you know, shoot that site for anybody that like want to like, you know, fault the process. And then down to the very fact that the whole thing will be checked on the process and transmitted immediately before all of the agents and all of the voters. I make fair shot of all of that and Nigerians are truly disappointed with this particular election. Thank you. It's Chukuma. anything but free. Thank you, Chukuma. I'd like to bring in uh, Suleiman Ogabu, the co-convener. Election Integrity Monitoring Group into this conversation. Now, Suleiman, INEC is in the eye of the storm. Did INEC overpromise and underdeliver? And how has the Independent National Electoral Commission addressed the concerns raised by both the opposition parties, international observers, local observers regarding transparency and fairness in the election process? And uh, what does he say about the integrity of the entire process? Yeah, um, <clears throat> thank you very much. Um, first, before I go to your question, I'd like to make um, a quick intervention into some of what my colleagues have said. I want us to be careful as um, observers, as civil society people, as analysts, with the things that we give Philip to, with the things that we help to give life to. Mm. There are so many videos. I I'm sure if I asked my colleague about the video of one of the, perhaps, I, I have not seen, and, and I do not think that it's possible for one of the leading four candidates, not even any of the 18, that will come on video and encourage violence. I, I do not think that is true, and I think we need to be careful. Mm. I also think that as civil society, we need to be careful about some of the things that we allege INEC to have done. I am going to come directly to your question, but I need to make some of this um, Thank preliminary you for statement. So, for instance, when we say that, okay, the beavers have been used to uh, transmit um, House of Rep and Senate and not President, that, that, that may not be exactly the way it is. I think that INEC failed woefully in terms of using its, uh, 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 its uh, electronic transmission that it promised. Uh, so, because when we start to zero in and say, oh, it worked for Rep, it worked for Senate, we, we're already creating narratives that have, you know, obvious conclusions, and that's dangerous for the quality. 
So coming down to your question, what you said about INEC, INEC over-promised and woefully under-delivered on one of the aspects. INEC also over-promised and did not deliver adequately on some other aspect. And I will explain. INEC assured the country that it has this um, IREV and it's actually encouraged so many people to come up. We we're expecting that you'll be seeing results live. Now, it failed. Now that it failed is not the big news because things failed in Nigeria. We all went through situation where right now we still have payments that we have made that have not been delivered. So I do not believe that technology can offer. Matter of fact, I have cautioned over time over this um, expecting too much from electronic uh, intervention in our elections. However, where I next failed more, like uh, uh, um, uh, my sister from enough is enough. Adam Oleku alluded to, is that I may fail to communicate until the buzz became loud before I then said something. That is very, very, that's irresponsible, actually. I may ought to have been communicating to Nigeria as things they expected weren't going well, they ought to have been communicating. So I may fail in that regard. Whatever happened to your to your server, whatever the situation is, you ought to have been carrying people along. You ought to have been you have to carry Nigerians along, that's quite unfortunate. In the other aspect where I said INEC also promised but didn't deliver as much is in the area of logistics. So there were logistical problems. And this is not new to our election. Mm. Even where they do off-season elections, we still see some of these things. These are not things entirely in INEC's power because you rely on other people to provide certain services. But nonetheless, I mean, these do have impact. They have implication, you know. Uh, but I know that some of those ones were addressed by extending the time, and you know, citizens were able to address some of those issues. In the other areas where we had problems was in, in terms of security, and this is where the Nigerian police is at fault. We understand that your men at the polling center will not carry firearms, but they ought to carry phones with which they can record evidence. They also ought to carry walkie-talkie, with which they could call for backup. Some of these things didn't happen. But all in all, because I've heard my colleagues made a verdict on the election that it falls gravely below expectation, and I think we are not being fair to ourselves. We are not being fair to um, the process itself. So if you outline the process, indeed we know the places the INEC did not match up. But when you look at the general election, it's even in the places where we have violence, and this is not the first time, and this violence, again, it's something I need to warn about. It didn't just happen in Lagos. It happened in other parts, in the east, in parts of the north, in, in the south-south. It, it, it happened in many places. Mm. So nobody should lay claim to, oh, perhaps this area was violent. No, it's not so. This still, it, it still boils down to the fact that our country is a country where there are no consequences. And people do things, including committing electoral crimes, and get away with it. And that's why we continue to see this unfortunate uh, shenanigans time and time again. So what I want to say is that the election, its process and its outcome do not deserve the kind of blanket condemnation and a grading of failure that is getting. If we look at it, because I've spoken with many analysts, I've spoken with many citizens, especially young people, um, so there's this tendency to accept things where you think that it reflects your expectation and to totally reject it where it does not. And I do not think that that is the best way to look at things. If you ask me, this election did not meet up to uh, the hype that we expected. It did not meet up to the promise that it made. But will it, can it be said to have substantially complied? In my personal opinion, and I'm not the court, I will say I think so, but I will leave the court. And that's why I disagree with those who are asking those who are grieved over the outcomes of this election not to go to court. You are not helping the polity by doing some peacemaker and saying don't go to court. Mm. How would we improve? It is litigation over time that has helped us to improve the quality of our election. Of the process. Let them go to, and I want to re-emphasize re something that um, Yemi said earlier as well. INEC has within its powers to look at its process and the results it has declared and it can recall some of the why is INEC not using INEC should be encouraged, should be urged. We should demand that after you have declared, fine, you have done that. Can you please take a step back? Look at all of these areas that people have come Audit about. the many, results. Many, a, a sort of audit, yes. And, you know, 
you check it properly. If there are those that you need to recall, you look at the total impact. I mean, the, the quantum of its impact on the entire outcome. Before th you th can thank you. It, yes, thank you, that. Suleiman. I would like to bring uh, Yemi into this conversation. Uh, Yemi, Suleiman said something instructive. He said, you know, INEC had its faults, but we shouldn't have a blanket condemnation of INEC. Now, it, this brings me to my question. What role has the international community played in monitoring the Nigerian elections? Because just yesterday, the British Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, congratulated uh, the President-elect, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, on his victory and said he was looking forward to working together with him uh, on security, trade ties, opening up business opportunities and creating prosperity in both countries. So does this in any way serve as an endorsement of the process by the United Kingdom? I mean, I don't believe so. I think he's respecting the fact that as a country, we're a sovereign nation. We have decided that this is the person we have elected as president. And he's, he's, he's acknowledging that, let me put it that way. Um, the US, the UK government has funded several organizations that have issued statements condemning the process. The EU statement, I believe, says the same thing. And the US State Department statement, while congratulating Mr. Tinubu, also alludes to the fact that they recognize that there were some irregularities and that they hope that people do go to court. Ultimately, I think let's be clear, um, international foreign countries and international bodies are quite concerned about violence in Nigeria. Mm. They know that we don't have the capacity to contain it. And yeah, we don't have the capacity to contain it. And the fallout of it will be disastrous both for the country, for their own citizens that work here, and also pretty much have regional and global consequences. So I believe that a lot of these statements are meant to tone down, mm -hmm. ensure that the quality is toned down, and people don't react in a way that will cause repercussions that they don't want to have to deal with. But ultimately, I think the people that have the, the greatest stake in this game are Nigerians. So while international bodies would fund, would send observer missions, I think it's the Nigerians should set the tone of what they want to take out of this, not, not uh, those outside the country. Thank you, Yemi. Now, Chukuma, earlier today, the flag bearer of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, in a press conference, uh, said he won the poll and he will explore all legal options to reclaim his mandate. Uh, we've also seen a similar declaration by Elijah Tukwabako, who said he's going to go to court to challenge the process. The Supreme Court of Nigeria has never overturned a presidential election through court, though uh, court challenges are common, including uh, the one instituted by President Buhari, who doggedly fought his past election losses for months in vain. So how much confidence do you have the Nigerian judiciary to address the needs of the aggrieved parties? I am very confident that this one will be very different, uh, considering that we've not seen this level of uh, irregularities before. And I say that without missing words, you know, we must call a spade a spade and not a famine implement. If I know by the law is empowered to set guidelines for the election, and I've done that, reassured Nigerians severally, and just at the last point, no transmission, and in a haste to call the results. The essence of collation is not just to like come and announce results. I mean, like I suspected, parties express concerns, and none of those concerns were looked into. And I, I, I saw like, uh, you know, one of the party agents telling the chairman that you are biased, because what is actually expected? When people come up with evidence, video evidence, now as even as admissible between, between the court, I had one of uh, my co-discussions, I think Suleiman, who said something about like, maybe the video, he has not even seen the video, uh, probably is false and all the rest, but I want to stand today that today in Nigerian's court, of course, video evidence is admissible. It can be proved wrong, wrong in any case, like maybe if it's like a make-believe video. But you've not seen that and you don't need to conclude, and we know, like, trying to, like, point out to the fact that there were pockets of violence here and there, yes. But, of course, of great magnitude and even, like, from, from some of the reports that we saw from some quarters, the one in Rivers and Lagos, you can't compare that with any other thing close that happened in other parts of the country. So we must be able to look at that, trying to, like, justify the violence that happened in those areas is completely unacceptable. And when I want to say something I, like... I, I don't think know, anyone is trying to justify the violence. It just says... Uh, if we're going to speak, uh, we should speak with all the proof we have. Because uh, we live in the social media age, and he who alleges 
uh, must come uh, with proof. Now, uh, thanks for addressing uh, that, uh, Chukuma. I'd like to uh, bring uh, Suleiman into this conversation. Now, the elections took place against the backdrop of the twin disruptions of, uh, you know, cash scarcity and fuel scarcity. Uh, did this in any way affect the level of voter participation? Because when INEC came out with the figures, you know, 93, 94 million uh, registered voters, a lot of people were excited. And looking at the final results, uh, there were more people that participated in the last general elections uh, than this one. What do you think is responsible for this uh, level of voter apathy? Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, and um, thank you for helping me to clarify with my brother Chukuma. I do not in any way justify any form of violence. It, uh, uh, it's appalling. Um, to straight to your question, um, indeed, there is a statistic that will be interesting to have from INEC after all of this process. And that is to look at the statistics of new voters, those who have voted for the first time. And I hope that the viewers will help us to you know, present such statistics. Uh, because um, there are two theories, and I seem to favor the second one. OK, so there is a theory that, of course, all of the things that have happened and the fact that people are disappointed in the system and all of that informed the low voter turnout. And to a good extent, yes, part of that is true. Uh, the Naira situation, the fuel situation, the agony that Nigerians have had to go through recently uh, obviously would have disenfranchised quite a number of people who increased the level of apathy in the system. However, there is a second theory that perhaps, because of beavers, this is the first time we have seen the true reflection of the number of people who vote in Nigeria. And that is why I won against anybody doing a blanket, a blanket verdict of failure on the process. Let me tell you, we have made leaps. We have made progress more than the United States have made in the electoral system. For all you care, the United States has continued to remain a two-party state. This election, for the first time, has turned Nigeria to probably a three- or four-party state. That is why we should not forget that. The fact is that this beavers has also helped to ensure that the issue of underage voters, do we, though we still saw video of some of such incidents in, in some places, but the issue of underage voters, the issue of people going to vote on people's behalf, beavers has helped us. We have made some progress. And this point needs to be made. Nigeria's electoral coalition, result coalition, it is still manual. Do not let us misinform the public. INEC has in its guidelines that it has the, the beavers, the result transmitted by beavers is picture. It's not in, it's not in, um, it's not in digit format. So it's not like something that you can quick. It is there to help checkmates, like we had in the issue of Osho, it is up to help validate, to check if there is any contention about any result, something to fall back on. It's not as if that is what is going to be used for collation like we have seen. So that INEC did not use it for collation is not the end of the world. What will be problematic, what INEC will find difficult to convince the world and people like me about, is if it then failed to address some of the very critical issues that contenders to this outcome have raised. This is where we all need to be careful and calm and ask INEC to do the right thing. And if it fails to do the right thing, people should then approach the court to have to look into these issues. Perhaps at the end of the day, INEC may look at all of this and look, look at it and say, oh, this has substantially affected this outcome. Mm -hmm. We are going to recall this declaration we have made. Or it may look at it and say, well, this is unfortunate, but it does not substantially affect the outcome and leave the court to then decide whether that is or not. So in the overall, yes, I believe that the beavers has helped to curb issue of inflated figures in our electoral outcome because we are there on the field. And you see some of the figures that have been quoted and you wonder where did these people really vote. So I, I think that the beavers has helped us in that regard and we should not take our eyes off that. Thank you, Suleiman. Now, Yemi, um, Suleiman just pointed out to you some positives uh, from this exercise. Now, this is not the end of the electoral season. Next week, Saturday, 11th of March, to be precise, uh, Nigerians will be going to the polls again to elect governors and uh, members of the House of uh, State Houses of Assembly. Uh, what are your expectations from INEC, and is there still time for them to improve uh, and, you know, act on some of the complaints that citizens and 
observers and political parties uh, made during the conduct of the presidential elections? Yeah, I mean, just to respond to Suleiman a bit, I'm not quite sure that people are meaning to throw away the baby with the bathwater. By the end of the day, the outcome of an, ele an election is determined by the results. So regardless of the process, of uh, the progress we've made with the Bibas, and I completely agree with you, because it's helped, um, but even that was slightly problematic. Let, let's even go back to that a little bit. INEC was very big on no PVC, no vote, but we have several reports of people voting without their PVCs because, yes, they were in, they, they were in that polling unit, but either because INEC itself didn't make the PVC available or they were unable to go and pick it up, they voted anyway. So you have that problem aside. But VIVAS did work, I think, for those doing the statistics, say probably about 88, 90% of the time when it came to accreditation. But it's the same VIVAS that failed when it came to uploading results. So, and I like the fact that you talked about INEX process being manual. Yes, it's manual, but it's the same process that allows you to uh, ask for a review when you think people have manipulated results sheets. From ward collation to local government collation to state collation, examples after examples where all INEC officials across that value chain, including the chairman himself at the National Collation Center, refused to pause to take any factual feedback in a sense or uh, petition, if I want to use that word, that would change the results. So while we've made progress in our process, I mean, our voter turnout numbers are quite low, at 27 odd percent, that's cause for work. The outcome of an election is whoever is declared winner. And so if that process, be it maybe the last mile of what has been an okay process so far, is then fraud, well, is then perceived to be fraudulent or does not meet the threshold that the commission itself set for itself. You can't blame people for wanting to throw up the whole process because at the end of it, it's not producing the outcome that it should, which is a fair, credible election. Now for, we're about almost a week out now mm -hmm. for the gubernatorial and state house of assembly elections. I think the good thing about it at least is we don't have a presidential election where everybody's eyes are pretty much on the center. So for different civil society groups, different citizens groups, really pay attention to your state level record. Some state level regs, I don't have the names off the top of my head, but they were flagged for being clearly partisan. And we saw some of that during the presidential elections. So if you know in your state that your state rec has been alleged to be partisan, either because they belong to a political party or had affiliations, you need to set up processes that allows direct engagement that just doesn't leave them. So we're talking engage police, engage the rec. I mean, the army were deployed in Lagos and Fiat. I'm not quite sure they were deployed around the country, but I, I believe they were. In places where it could be contentious, like your Lagos, your Rivers, your Kano, civil society groups should engage the army, the REC, and the police in those, in those states and begin to positively message that people should come out and they will be protected for them to vote. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of INEX processes, INEX, again, part of the conversation around communication has given no inclination that it's doing any review, it's trying to improve whatever the problem might have, might have been, that their process failed on the 25th. Uh, don't you think they're doing it internally or they need to communicate? Do they owe Nigerians a duty to communicate uh, this with the nation? They certainly do. I think they certainly do owe us a duty, especially because it's at the back of that that, it, that citizens are unhappy with the process. So if you recognize that your process failed, and you know that you want to use this in another way, you owe us the responsibility to say, look, we do recognize that this has failed. We'll set up an internal mechanism to review it. And whatever the findings are, we will do A, B, C, D. But citizens are basically taking that up in while we're waiting for INEC to get its act together. So EIA Nigeria, in partnership with the budget, CGID, and DataFight, have built a portal that does two things. One, it allows citizens to upload their own election result sheets. So we can compare it to what INEC has. And it's basically public, so everybody can see it. But also during the governorship elections on the 11th, it will also be a public platform that's parallel in a sense to IREN, so that citizens are doing their own uploading. While we're waiting for INEC to say Bivas is not loading, Bivas is not doing this, citizens can load with mm -hmm. their phone. And so it's all there for the public to see. So when Games start at world collation, local government collation. Citizens can refer to what had been uploaded before, and in real time, are able to calculate and say, "No, that's not accurate." Okay, uh, thank you, Yemi. Now, Chukuma, 
Looking at this elections, one thing that stood out is youth participation. I don't think there's any time in modern Nigerian history that the youths have been uh, so invested and interested in the electoral process. Now, looking at voting patterns, how much of an impact uh, that the youths have and how can they, what needs to be done to sustain their interest in the political process and not just elections? Well, to sustain the interest of the youth, that will be if they see fairness, justice, and they are sure that their votes truly count. We know that uh, the unusual turnout we saw with young persons, the young persons uh, more or less like said enough is enough, yeah? Let me align myself with Yemi. You know, because uh, with the NSAS protests came with like a resolve, a desire for like a better nation. And also Lehman pointed out that the U.S. they are comfortable with two party systems, which of course have ideologies and are delivering on their mandates to the people. But in our own case, the PCP, PDP has not been able to like live up to the, the, the manifestos. And we see that translated into, into a kind of like restlessness amongst young persons who are ready to take their destinies into their hands and we saw how like a party that was nowhere a party that was on the floor how young persons picked it from the floor and made it like the thought you know temporarily based on the result that has been declared i mean it's marvelous for like a party that could be before now referred to as a mushroom party in nigeria political balance coming up to that position of have like having a six point something million, right? You know, despite all of the, you know, allegations of, you know, which, now, which now, will be put by staying, the courts. Same with you, Chukuma, on this issue of the third force and uh, Labour Party. And knowing how Nigerian political system works is a winner-takes-all uh, sort of situation. And, you know, politicians don't really like to stay in opposition. They want to go with the winning team. Do you see uh, the Labour Party keeping this momentum, keeping a structure uh, when... The new government takes place, I mean, regardless of what the Supreme Court says. Uh, would you see members of the Labour Party jumping ship to the uh, ruling party? Well, well, I don't really see that happening because, I mean, I mean, like, Labour Party, will, like, with a lot of persons now who will be going into the into House of Rep, into Senate, people that just came from nowhere, they were neither like maybe grounded politicians. Many of them just give it a first shot at running to for like a political position, and they made it. So considering the fact that they were nowhere and the party made them, I, I think it would be a lot difficult than like what we've seen in cases where people like the context, they want to make it by all means. So if it's not favoring them here, they just uh, jump, yeah, ship. jump ship. So I see that, you know, you already have like some structures on ground that we are sure they are sustainable. Thank you, Chukumen. Now, Sliman, uh, just before we wrap things up, what steps can be taken to ensure that Nigeria's electoral process is free, fair, more inclusive and representative of all citizens, regardless of their social, economic status or political affiliations? Uh, we've seen some uh, shocking results uh, from the just-concluded elections. Etiosa local government, uh, Etiosa federal constituency, uh, as an example, and also uh, serving governors who did not... Uh, make it to the Senate. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad that you, like, you alluded to those, and these are part of the wins of the uh, last um, election that I don't want us to lose sight of. And I agree with my colleagues. Um, a, a, an election is as good as the credibility of its outcome. Um, so I think that it's important that INEC um, not only um, play fair, but play in a way that everybody can, can see that it has made effort to address all issues. It's not enough for INEC to just cover up things. Let me let me be upfront to say that I, I believe in democracy. I believe in our effort at democratization, but I do not believe in the presidential system. I also do not believe in an overarching INEC. Perhaps maybe an INEC that becomes um, a, a regulator of elections somewhere, but not an INEC that has to become so ubiquitous and be everywhere. Uh, so I look forward to that day uh, when Nigerians can actually take reign of our narrative, perhaps go back to the parliamentary system, which is my own desire, and also where local governments can handle their own elections credibly because standards okay. have been set for that exercise. So I, 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 the most important thing, the most important thing that needs to happen first is that people need to have faith in the outcome of elections. 
And we are going to an era where politicians will be more accountable because with this advent of beavers and hopefully other reforms that will come after now, politicians are getting to see that they are actually not as invincible as they thought. And our mm. citizens are not as helpless as they have assumed us to be. And I think that will be the beginning of progress and, and, in, in, in our electoral system. And again, for Nigerian citizens, I would like to say a big thank you uh, to my esteemed uh, guest, uh, Suleiman Aribagru, co-convener of the Election Integrity Monitoring Group, and Yemi Adap Moleko, Director, Enough is Enough, and Chukuma Okenwa, in Enugu, Executive Director, Lead Network Africa. It was a pleasure having you all join in this conversation. I do appreciate your, your time and insight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.